Hello again guys and welcome back to another Big Al Devlin video here at the House of Devlin. Thank you very much for tuning in. This is a continuation of our topic of paganism, uh, but this is a new series actually to that topic. Now don't worry, I know that within this channel I have a number of different series all concerning themselves with paganism. Some of these series have been completed, finalised, but others still need to be expanded and finished. And of course, this is something I will still be doing. This is not a replacement or an adjunct to all of those previous series such as the Law of the Runes and stuff like this. So I still will be going through those topics and of course I will be randomly adding sort of videos that don't fit a particular series just randomly throughout um, as I progress in knowledge of course but this is a very much a specific series focusing upon a very specific set of subjects that I wish to now share with you. Um, now hopefully this will interest you if you're into paganism, um, um, any of the branches of paganism, I'm sure that you'll find this at least if not interesting um, then hopefully something that will help expand your mind further which of course is something that we're all uh, very much after. Now what I will be doing within this series as you can see beside me there are a stack of books Within this series, I will be exploring knowledge that I have managed to get my hands on and knowledge that I will be kind of dissecting and acquiring and interpreting for myself from these books here and others that I am still to get my hands on but know where they are, so to speak. Now, these are old books or rare books um, and they are books that are based upon the original practices of paganism within specifically the British Isles. Now, I am someone of a variety of different heritages, in essence, um, within the pagan world, okay? Um, I'm on my mother's side, all my family is Welsh, and obviously originating as a result within sort of, you could say, Celtic paganism. Now, I not go pay Celtic paganism because it's not truly Celtic paganism, it's a branch of Celtic paganism, which of course would be Britannic, sometimes known as Anglo Saxon paganism, but uh, I prefer the word Britannic because it actually predates the Angle and the Saxon tribes, of course. So it, it, it goes before that, but then kind of mixes in together. And so I am trying to pursue a further knowledge of my Celtic side because, of course. I practice Nordic paganism, and it doesn't really matter. I don't care what name you give to whatever. I'm pagan, and that's it. I don't label myself as such as a Nordic pagan, but my primary sort of focus and drive within paganism is Nordic paganism, because my father's side, my father, um, his heritage, you can you can follow our family name back right to um, the Vikings. Okay, um, specifically a group of Vikings that settled in Northern Ireland. So they would, have, of course, be Nordic pagans or just for themselves religious <laughs> right, at that point. Right, they would have just believed in the gods. They wouldn't have given themselves a name as such. But they are what we would call now Nordic pagans, and they themselves, obviously, having settled in Ireland um, just around just before um, a thousand AD, about 989 AD, I think they settled in Ireland. Of course, then over time they were themselves would have been Celtic pagan. Now, obviously, I followed my forefathers, as I say, sort of heritage. Um, so I do consider myself a Nordic pagan above all things. But as I say, I'm a pagan, and I do believe my dual heritage as a sort of Britannic pagan as well, or Celtic pagan, whichever you want to describe it as. And, and so basically what I want to do is I've got a pretty good knowledge of Nord Nordic paganism, something that's continuing to expand and of course will be a lifelong pursuit. But now I want to expand as best as possible my Britannic paganism knowledge because there are differences um, and beyond subtle differences as well. And I'll be going into, in the next video, some of the reasons why there are sometimes quite profound differences within paganism but at the same time, they're still the same religion. You can have very, very different belief systems, very different gods in, in many ways, um, and presentations of sometimes the same gods, just under different names, but sometimes it can be completely different gods, additional gods, less gods, whatever, um, and different belief systems and, 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 and everything, but they're still the same religion. And I'll get into that because it's quite a compli complicated subject in another video. But what I'll be doing in this particular series as I begin to expand it, um, as I get more books, as I read into them and that. Within the books I have to the side of me, I'll leave these two to last because that's very specific. I have three books here that, I mean, one of them, there's only 250 copies. 
in the world left. Okay, so they're quite rare books. Um, the first one, I'll leave that one to the last actually. The first one that we're going to be talking about, um, well, I'm going to introduce you to now, um, and then as I read them, I will sort of, as I say, interpret the what I find out and present to you in a much more sort of digestible format okay so I will not simply just read to you what's in the book but what I will do is I present to you my findings in a way that I understand and have interpreted the results okay um, and so what I have here uh, this particular one is called Silent as the Trees and it's a, a book basically to sum it up on um, paganistic practices or witchcraft if that's what you want to call it because of course that's how it would have been seen um, over the last few centuries but paganistic practices that have um, been in the area of Devon so Devonshire uh, have been in Devonshire uh, which is in southern England um, basically from the beginning of paganism within uh, Britain right through into today it's uh, paganistic practices folklore and ultimately magic rituals and, and practices um, that have survived, um, that are still known to exist um, and have been passed on um, through the typical pagan way, which is of course um, oration, okay? So verbal conduct from one person to another, typically passing down within families. So a father would teach a son or the mother would teach a son or daughter, whatever. It, it's obviously non the non gender specific, um, but the, the, the parents will teach their children, and over the generations, this knowledge has been preserved. And one of the reasons why I'm not going to simply read these things to you or anything along those lines is simply because um, there will, of course, be some. <sighs> Don't want to use the wrong word, but the only word that comes to my mind is kind of corruption over the years. Um, so over the generations, the original knowledge will still be there, but it would have been interpreted slightly different by every generation. So you almost like playing Chinese whispers. Now the core meaning of the original belief systems and practices will still be there, and so not every generation that necessarily would have diluted or made worse the knowledge. It may have added additional knowledge, which is of course useful and good. Um, but especially over the last couple of centuries, at least, um, where you know there was severe persecution of of pagans and things like this there may have been sort of christianity aspects added to the knowledge just simply because well you can't help it when you grow up in a world where everyone's christian and you may even be christian but you're just simply passing on knowledge that your forefathers have taught you not knowing that it's pagan but just seeing it as a traditional thing then of course sometimes things can get skewed and so what i'll be doing is we'll be going through this with a fine tooth comb and i will be trying to sift through it to find what is of true value, if you understand what I'm trying to say. Everything's of value, but the real, true, original value of the practices and the belief systems. And so this one is based upon um, magical practices and pagan pagan ways and beliefs uh, set within um, the area, as I say, of England called Devon. Um, so it's all their original beliefs, essentially. Um, and it gives a, you know, in, in, in many respects, actually, which is very useful. It does have a, an area which is... It, about encounters with witchery, as it says here, which is, of course, um, the persecution of pagans as witches uh, within sort of the Middle Ages and, uh, and, and around that sort of time. So, um, which is useful. One, it's nice to know history. It's nice to know what got, went on in the past, but it's also nice to see sometimes the other side of the mirror, so to speak, your reflection. So basically you'll see paganism through the eyes of those who were persecuting them. Now they didn't understand what, of course, the pagans at that point were doing. They saw it as witchcraft, as, you know, um, uh, heathenry and, 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 and things like this, um, heresy. And so when they saw it, they saw the works of the devil. They didn't see, obviously, that it was an ancient religious practice and traditions that have been passed through generation to generation from their own forefathers, may I, may I add also, as well as, obviously, the forefathers of those practicing it. Uh, and But, of course, seeing it from the perspective of someone else, um, if you take away all the, oh, that was the work of the devil, or this was this and that, it, if you take all that out, 
you still get a basic an account of what was going on. So say they went there on the day of a particular festival celebrating, I don't know, the, the, the Green Man, for example, then you will see how, of course, pagans used to um, uh, praise and worship and celebrate this god or that particular day or whatever it was, the Southern Equinox, for example, you'll see how they used to practice it. It doesn't matter that it's from the perspective of someone who hated them, it's still an eyewitness account of what was going on, so it's still useful to have. And then, of course, we go into other areas, which we'll go on to, as we say, uh, as I say, when we progress through this uh, series. Within this particular book, we've got something called Skin Turning and Familiar Spirits. Um, uh, I, I believe it's got um, a reference to um, essentially so sacred sites or sites where, not magic, but, but where the kind of spiritual essences sort of um, uh, coalesce within um, the material realm called the Devil Stones, which is an area within uh, Devon. Um, and then you've got uh, then a, an expansion into different types of charms um, and uh, different magical practices also. Useful to know about, and certainly we will get into all of that when we do. The next book, which I'm particularly looking forward to, um, is this one here okay now this is uh, called between between the realms and this is just really more of a history book more than anything else it's not a history book but it's from it's from written by pagans and that um but it's um a sort of presentation of the realms and the spiritual creatures that live within the material realm or, or the other realms that, that, that are, were seen as being sort of experienced. And it also gives, and it is fantastic, um, a, a complete account of the Celtic gods and goddesses that were once worshipped within the area of Cornwall. Okay, so this is from Cornish paganism. Because of course, yes, we had Britannic paganism, but every area was somewhat isolated to some degree. You know, back before cars and trains and planes and all that were invented, you had to walk everywhere. And so it would be quite typical that you probably may not even leave your village in your entire life for most people. So a lot of these practices, although do come from, you know, they are going to be almost identical, will have their own variations. And it's nice to equip yourself with a whole wealth of knowledge um, from a whole wealth of different perspectives um, but yes it will go on to it, it describes the gods and goddesses um, uh, when giants strode the land uh, uh, essentially um, spirits within rocks and stones the faces and spirits in rocks and stones um, the other world okay um, pixies and fairy lands shamans and druids there's a, all an account within that particular book it's something that I will probably be focusing mostly on because um, there's less interpretation so we say with that it's just what it is uh, and then of course we finish with um, this one here it's called a Cornish book of ways okay um, this is the rarest one that I've got there's only 250 uh, copies of this book um, and this really concerns itself most specifically with um, ultimately the spiritual side of things. And when I say spiritual, what I don't mean is the spiritual realms. So from a Nordic perspective, for example, Asgard, um, um, hell to, to an extent, yeah, well, it is one of the spiritual realms, but, you know, Jotunheim, you know, all the, all the, the basically all the nine realms except for Midgard. We're not concerning ourselves necessarily with the spiritual realms, but the spiritual realms when they lap over and kind of find a, a sort of a thinness in the veil, if you wish, lap over into our own realm, interact with our realm, and how we can interact with those interactions. And so it really focuses on, as I say, the spiritual aspect, um, mostly of where hell itself has um, spilled over into our land and so there is a, a strong almost necromantic aspect to this um, I believe yeah it's from uh, again Cornish magic um, and yes there is references to the different sort of protective 
uh, spells and works that, that people use, that shamans used and druids used. Um, it even goes into the rites of the moon and how that affects certain aspects of things. Um, but it, as I say, mostly concerns itself potentially with places of power and other such, uh, and as I say, how everything kind of interacts with the spiritual aspect. And so really what I want to do is just finish really on something that I read here that sums up paganism as a whole very, very well. Um, those of you who are pagan will understand exactly as I'm reading this out, um, how it kind of relates to our belief systems um, and how it differs from most of the religions. Um, and then in videos following this, they will be just as and when I've read certain parts that I want to share with you. But let's finish off with this. It's a quote from you know quite a long time ago. Okay. Um, and, it, and it says here, the human skull is a symbol of death. For us, death holds a strange fascination. Each and every one of us is born to die. But death, but is death a final end of life? We say no. For we know that there are other places and other things. Our whole lives and being are devoted to the ever-present, but also the unseen world of the spirit. To us, the spirit world is a reality, a living thing. To us, everything has a spirit, a soul, a personality, be it animal, mineral, or plant. And just before we, we finish the video, guys, that's enough on those books for the time being. As I say, we'll expand uh, what I share with you as I kind of get into the books. I've only really just sort of got them to, well, literally to that, uh, was it today or yesterday? It's the first time I've had a chance to look at them. Here are two books. Now, there is nothing within these books. This one is just a small little notebook. Okay. And this one is a little bit more elaborate. And I've got six of these. Um, it's just a little latch there and then you can open it up and again there's a notebook inside now there's nothing special about these notebooks apart from the fact that they're beautiful the handmade by by pagans as well which is always nice to do um, but um, what's going in there are my own learnings so um, I've obviously done a lot of videos here on YouTube already where I share my interpretation, my uh, understandings and show you how my understandings develop over time. This is something that's important because of course you can't just stay still with something. You, you can never learn everything. You must always have an open mind to learning not only new things but to developing your knowledge of old things and sometimes scrapping old old old, old ideas i did one video on here about the volvo well, several videos on here about the volvo but one was that i made a mistake about my understanding of what it was as i was going along i was trying to understand things more and more and eventually i realized that some of my previous things that i had shared were incorrect and that's one of the things that you must do you must be able to let go um of things and if you've watched my room videos, you'll know all about how it as an ESA and how, you know, the hanging on process can develop ESA and stuff. So it's important to always let go of things. Now, as I say, what I've done so far is expanded my knowledge of runes quite considerably. And I'll be sharing with you again within that series, obviously, the completion of my knowledge and understanding of that. And I may maybe do refilms as in a few years time as my knowledge progresses. I've started to do videos on the realms. Asgard, um, um, uh, and uh, Midgard, uh, all the all the different realms. Hell, um, Jotunheim. <laughs> I stop there. But anyway, what I've done is I've done uh, you know a study of the realms, a presentation of the gods and themselves, a presentation of some of the myths and stories behind, say, Nordic paganism, for example. And of course, we'll be expanding on the Celtic and Britannic side of things um, as we go along, also. Um, and as I do this, obviously, I'm also practicing um, something that comes natural to me, Seder magic. Um, and I will be, obviously, I do have access to, essentially, um, I'll be actually accessing a couple of old grimoires also, um, but also um, the, the practices and rites within those books that I've just shown you also. And what I will be doing is I will be jossing down within the smaller books, I have two of these, my own experiences of using magic, what I have acquired and learnt for myself using magic, what spells do I feel work 
and don't work. Or how I personally perform a trance and things like this. So I'll be putting all my knowledge into that. And these big ones, as I say, have six of them. Each one will be dedicated to a specific aspect. So one will be for the runes, one will be for the realms and the gods themselves. Uh, one will be for like the spiritual side, the, the, the well, not spiritual side of things, the, the kind of spirits and land spirits and the pixies and the fairies, you know, those kind of things. And there will obviously, what I'll do in every part of them, I'll try and leave pages blank so I can continue adding to them. And as I start filling them out, again, I will share them with you, possibly may mean refilming of old topics, but of course will also lead to a generation of new topics and um, expansion of old ideas. So that's what's coming up soon, guys. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you soon. Bye-bye.